Okay, so um, we're going to try and do this in one take as per normal. Uh, I would say that this is the most important video clip I'm going to do about trading. And I, when I first started doing videos about trading, I, I was going to mention this. But for one reason or another, I held back from doing it. I think it's because you get a lot of um, uh, YouTube uh, people and so-called influencers talking from, I don't know where they get it from. And I thought that if I mentioned this tale, uh, I would be viewed in the same way. Uh, this is a little story. It's a true story. Um, I have statements to back it up, if so required. Um, but it's something which, it was a process which I went through, uh, which it was just, it was amazing. That's all I can say. It, the effects it had on my trading were dramatic. Dramatic. So, um, Let's give you a little background on this now, okay? So, and this happened many, many moons ago, okay, by the way, it happened many, many moons ago. Uh, and I think it's a lesson which you might be able to learn uh, to help and assist in your trading. Okay, so back in the day, as you know, I used to trade on a, on a trading floor and I keep on mentioning here, there and everywhere. And Although I, I like those days, I was trading in really turbulent times. Um, for example, uh, when I had to go to Snyder Trading Associates as a prior to trader, they only done spreads and we were doing butterfly spreads uh, or calendar spreads on oil. And that was when oil was $145 a barrel. And uh, prior to doing those, obviously I had to get trained in, in how to do that. The way in which they'd done it was that they had a massive great big classroom. Uh, the course was for about four weeks as they were sort of training you up. And at the end of each week, they would fire uh, about 25% of the course, okay? And then at the last week, whoever remained got to go on the trading floor. Uh, this was in, whilst I was actually doing this uh, 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 course, I was actually trading for myself and I was doing okay. Uh, and that was on the DAX, funny enough it was outright uh, but anyway <clears throat> after that the, as you know 2008 it's around 2008 oil blew up dropped from 145 down to 45 I was actually trading in that and I actually didn't I didn't do too bad I, I came out with um, I was uh, $10 down on my P&L but my commissions were like $3,000 uh, dollars uh, I'd done 225 round trips on butterfly spreads and WTI. So that's quite a lot of commission, even by a proprietary trading uh, company standards. But it's, essentially, I was like flat over that period, uh, most, most turbulent periods ever. Um, but it, it, it hurt me <clears throat> and I sailed through and I carried on trading for a little bit. Then I took some time out. Then I got some money. And back in 2010, I went really you know, happy as Larry, put my money down for this trading thing, because uh, I put my own money down this time. And um, I started trading and I tried it, traded, it was more, uh, not well, two tens, but it was like uh, German Schatz v. the Bund, yeah? Uh, it's a little bit like an outright, because the Schatz, which is the two year uh, bond, moves very, very slowly. Whereas the 10 year bond moves very, very quickly. So it's, it was a way to get around their restrictions in terms of trading, uh, only allowed to trade spreads. It was the nearest I can get to an outright. Uh, those of the, you who've had different experiences of trading probably understand what I'm talking about. However, there were still restrictions. You had to pay £1,500 just to sit at the desk where you get your charting fees and squawk and all sorts of stuff. Uh, but the, the other thing was that this happened, so I've just come back in again after a break. Uh, I'd actually trained with another company, uh, CFT, and I was doing it on the sim at the time. And they said, yeah, you're really good on the butterfly spreads with the boom bubble shats, da 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 da. So I was all set to do that. 
and then someone said, no, you could do the two tens. So I sort of changed my strategy. But what was really bad was that it was happening with Greece. When Greece was in the target frame, and there was a lot of things going on in the European Union about Greece and whether or not Greece would even stay in the European Union rather than be expelled from it. And that wrecked my trading account badly. I was pushing it a bit hard, got, got an impatient, uh, and I lost quite a bit of money. It was after a very turbulent time in, in my home life. I was having a lot of trouble at home, uh, inside the home and outside the home. Um, and the money just went. So I figured I'd move out, leave it, and I'd trade from home because it was annoying me going in in the mornings and so much turbulence and volatility and staying till nine o'clock at night. Um, I need, I want to be with my wife. I needed to be with my wife. She'd gone through a very bad uh, period of time in her life at that moment in time. Uh, and anyway, but so now I was literally starting from nothing. So I decided to start tr to trade from home. I couldn't use the uh, clearing uh, brokers, which this uh, trading company used. I was on retail, total retail. And I had a starting balance of 3,350. Actually, I think it was a little bit less. Uh, in order to try and uh, give me a little bit of an edge, there was two things which I did, okay? Uh, the first thing is I, I used some equipment, which you can, as a trader, use too, okay? The first one was uh, eSignal. Now, eSignal is a charting package. It's not cheap. I think it cost me about 200 250 a month, okay? But the advantage is this. It gets direct. It gets its prices direct from the exchange. There's no uh, a dilution. There's no obstruction or obfuscation. Uh, it's pure prices. What has been traded on the exchange is what you will see. What you'll find with uh, quite a few retail, and especially back in the day there, the retail lot. There used to be a little bit of a, 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 a lag. Yeah, they would show you one price uh, when. The exchange was actually trading at a different price. Uh, I figured that I was only going to trade from the exchange traded quotes. Okay, these are uh, regulated exchanges. Uh, the exchange uh, which I was looking at was the Eurex, oddly enough, um, for the DAX, DAX futures. So that e signal was very important and it's still important now. If, if you're trading, with a retail broker, it is, I think it's worth your while to get live exchange traded fees, uh, feeds, yeah? So you can see what the true price is and you won't be off put by the price what they're showing you. In fact, in some respects, it can give you a little bit of an edge, okay? The next thing which I did was I took Live Squawk. Now, this is a, a squawk company worth uh, getting. It costs $250 uh, a month. So you can see some of the, the fees of trading have gone right up now. So I'm paying about £450, £500, this extra stuff. But the live squawk was handy because it was giving you real-time information, uh, not just from what you see on CNBC or, or Bloomberg, but also what some of the banks were doing, what they were trading, big trades getting uh, 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 clearing through. Uh, or if something happened which hadn't come on the news wires, the, the squawk would give it to you. It would give you that little edge, if you like. Likewise, if non-farm payroll came out or, I don't know, PMI, it would give you the colour towards those numbers and, and the background to those numbers to let you know, what, you know where they feel the market would be heading based on those figures. It was like having uh, an extra pair of ears, if you like, uh, in your house. I mean, if you have to pay someone to do that on a regular basis, to sit down with you and scowl all what's going on. And they wouldn't even have the access to the financial institutions. So I had those two things, eSignal and Live Squawk. There's another one called Rand Squawk, which they used to use at the, uh, on the private trading company. Uh, but I liked Live Squawk. There was another one called Sigma Squawk. They were a bit funny. Uh, <laughs> some of the things that they said was quite amusing. Um, 
but uh, yeah, it's like a radio which just comes out with uh, you know what's going down. Okay, so those were uh, the the tools that I used to assist me. The other thing what I did was I took a, a leaf out of uh, Picasso's quote: "Learn the rules like a pro." So you can break them like an artist. And at this point, I decided I was going to break the rules. You know, uh, when I was trading, you couldn't have overnight positions because it was mainly day trade. And even though what I was doing, um, I mean, sometimes you could because you were doing spreads. But generally, especially outright, you could not have overnight positions. Yeah, you used to have a daily stop. I always used to fill in my uh, my uh, daily sheet for in preparation for the market, I threw all those rules out the window. That was it, I just threw them all out the window. Yeah, um, my wife was pregnant at the time with twins and um, we were under a little pressure because she was expecting a little bit early. I don't know why, I was just like getting it all out. So then what I started doing was scaling up. So there was this Right, so I started scaling up. Scaling up is very important. Uh, I was watching a, um, a video over the weekend of some lady, a black lady from America. Uh, she was talking about how she was scaling up. It's brilliant, it's brilliant. When I was talking about scalping, you know, we were taught we need only to get four ticks, just four ticks consistently a day. Once we've got four ticks consistently a, a day, consistently, okay, then it would load up. So you load up with uh, one lot, two lot, one lot being worth, uh, say, uh, 10, 10 euros or $10, uh, two lot, three lot, four lot, five lot, so you're now at 50 uh, or euros uh, a tick, okay? But if you're getting it consistent, no problem, okay? And this is one of the things which I was doing. You see, what was happening with me, and, I, and you might find this yourself, is that uh, you get a small account, I don't know, three, two, five hundred pound account, and you can trade it masterfully, masterfully, okay? Uh, and then all of a sudden, you get to a certain level and it's all it's all gone down, yeah? It's all gone peaked on, yeah? So then you get another small account, uh, let's say uh, 200 uh, pounds, yeah? and you can flip that up to about maybe 800 pounds and you can do that within a week and you probably do that quite often then it blows up or something will happen and you you will blow up yeah but overall you know flipping um 200 pounds say flipping 200 pounds to 250 it's nothing is it really uh, or flipping um uh 400 pounds to uh, 600 pounds, uh, 800 pounds, it's, it's, it's not much. It's, it's like, it's well doable. Sometimes you can do that in a day, very much easy to do it in a week, yeah? If you're, you're, you're cautious, okay? So now, I wanna tell you the secret. If there's anything you wanna do, if anything you're gonna learn in this little video, start paying attention now. And I mean it. Start paying attention now. Okay? Because we all know that with trading, it's not so much about knowing about the technical analysis. Okay? Those of you who've done your reading may have read... Um, no, this escapes me now. Um, uh, trading in the Zone. Yeah, Mark Douglas. Yeah? Or The Disciplined Trader. Yeah? Uh, there's loads of them. Lo lo loads of books. Uh I've got them here, well, not right in front of me, but they're all over the place, you know. But uh, there's lots of books, and most of it is about trading is a psychological game, okay? You get so, you can get so far with the technical analysis and the fundamental analysis, okay? And then after that, it's your human psychology, which will win or lose the day, okay? Now, I want you to consider the following. You see this here? If, if your son was doing that, I dare say you'd carry on reading the newspaper. You wouldn't be concerned. 
I bet you could do that. You could do that, no problem. But actually, turn the bench around and just walk on the other side, and it's no problem whatsoever. Okay, and you know, seriously, you know, you could have a chat with other parents. Uh, you would not need to focus on your child doing that. Okay, fine. How about this? This is the trinasium. This is when you do P company to get your airborne wings, okay? It's one of the tests, what you do in test week. It's, they call it an aerial assault course. Basically, it's you're doing an assault course, but it's in the air. And if you muck up, you're, you're just gonna fall down. The guy at the top, he's gotta go at the top there. He's gotta bend down, touch his toes. He's gotta step over uh, to uh, areas of the bar because there's like, uh, I don't know what to call it things what means that you've got to step over them okay uh, that drop is real this is from the old uh old shot one the drop is real okay now <laughs> little johnny you are first of all you wouldn't even let little johnny up there okay for for the fear of what could be happening okay for the fear of what's going to be happening okay okay so this chap here philippe petit yeah he went one further he walked between the twin towers okay in 1974 tightrope walk between the twin towers okay i hope you get what i'm getting at downstairs when little johnny was doing it on that bench it was no problem there was no risk where was the risk in little johnny stumbling off yeah he might have hurt his arm or something like that you could do it if we turn the bench around if you turn the bench round, he'd have no problems. He could do a cartwheel, okay? You could do a cartwheel on a bench at that level. Why? Because there's no risk. But if you put that bench or a, 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 a plank, the length of that bench above the Twin Towers on a no windy day, there's no wind whatsoever, and you were asked to walk across the Twin Towers, <laughs> you'd start having issues, wouldn't you? You would start having issues. You wouldn't do it. Most people would just say, there's no way I'm going to do it. And you say, well, hold on a moment. <laughs> when it was just like two feet above, above the ground, you were doing cartwheels. You, you, you know, you, you could have a, you know, you could drink a bottle of whiskey or some drinks and you can dance, hop, skip along that plane. Now, just because it's almost a mile high, you've got issues. The issues is the risk which is involved. That is it, yeah? Your mind uh, is thinking on the negative and it's paralyzed on the negative. And because it's, you know, it, physically, when I've done uh, the Trinasium at P Company, it wasn't a bother for me. I could do the 10 mile, with the ruck in the back, and the log race, which was really hard, that was very difficult, okay? But the Trinasium, there was no, real physical exhaustion doing it it was all up here it was all up here if you weren't that scared of heights and funny enough i was but not those up heights but if you're not that scared of heights the trinasium has to be the most easiest test because it was all in the mind now when you've got this guy here walking across like this okay walking across the twin towers yeah you can see what the risks are one little break in concentration and you're gone you need to think about this when you're when you're trading okay with your 200 pound or 500 pound account yeah here is his line crossing yeah when you're trading with your 200 uh, uh pound dollar euro account and you're flipping it up to 300 uh, 400, maybe 500. It's all so easy. Why? Why is it so easy? It's easy because the risk is very low. Yeah? 200 pounds, it's like, what is that? You know, it's, it's nothing. So you're trading accordingly. You're trading virtually without fear. They say, don't trade. Only trade what you can afford to lose, they say. Okay? So you can afford to lose the 200, say. So now when you're trading, you're not, you're, the fear is gone. There is no fear, okay? 
when you get up to those heights, yeah, then they're scared. If you're going to put the money, what you've got, what you had for a mortgage, yeah, or you take a mortgage out, or you take a loan out, and you're trading, the fear zone goes right up, right up. How do you counter that? How do you counter that fear of risk? Okay, this is how we do it. This is how we're going to do it. What I did was I simply took away a zero from the number. Yeah, I just removed a zero from the number. And that made it a lot easier for me. I don't know how, I was just like, I was, when I look at the number, I just took a zero or I put a digital point behind the zero. So when it was a thousand pounds, I just looked at it like it was a hundred pounds. The 3,350 pounds was 350 pounds. 2,000 pounds is 200 pounds. 5,000 pounds is 500 pounds. Do you get, can you see where I'm going with this? When you took off, the, when I took off the zero, I didn't worry so much. I just ignore, I just, I was just ignoring the zero. Okay. So then when it gets to 10,000 pounds, I just dropped it off when I'm trading with a thousand pounds. So much easier, so much easier. See, sometimes you'll get to a level in your trading, uh, a figure, and when you hit that figure, boom, everything explodes and it all tumbles down, okay? Uh, and that's your, psychologically, you're worried about the risk involved and the fear of losing it, okay? So that was my hack, if you like, that I just knock off a zero and carry on trading. Now, what did that feel like? It felt as though I was like in a, a sports car, a Lamborghini, a, a, a Ferrari, and I was going with my foot down. I was um, raising uh, or scaling up on my trades. I started at five, one pound, then it was five pound, then I'd done it 10 pound, because 10 pounds is easy to calculate. Then I scaled it up to 20 pounds, okay? I was thinking about the 20 pounds, but I was looking at 20 pounds like it was two pound, yeah? So when it's 5,000 pounds, I'm thinking, would I trade two pound a point on a 500 pound account? Yes, I would. So I was whacking it out. There's times when I've traded uh, five pounds on a on a 500 pound a, a point. That's a massive, massive leverage. But when you've taken a, a zero off, you're now trading 50 pound, yeah, on a 5,000 pound a, a, a point. Now I kept on scaling up to 50 pound, 100 pound. Then it was uh, 200 pounds, 300 pounds, 500 pounds a point. Now. At this point, at this level, I can literally feel the people on the other side, my broker who I was using, who I shall name, will become <laughs> nameless. But they were horrible people. They used to really muck around with the prices and stuff. So if I wanted to sell, immediately I would be down about four ticks. Immediately, if I was 500 pounds a tick, uh, I was down 2,000 just getting into the position. But my, my thoughts were, screw you, because I know why I'm getting into that position, okay? I went all the way up to 700 pounds a point, okay? 700 pounds a point, okay? Driving that car on that motorway, not knowing whether or not there's a bloody articulated truck coming around the corner. That's the way I was driving. That's the way I was trading, okay? My focus was solid in front of me like the guy doing the tightrope walking, okay? Now, where did that get me? Where did that get me? Well, just after three weeks, that was my account size, okay? That was my account size. Just after three weeks, funny enough, look, that's just before the market opened. But, so that was my account size, yeah? I was just zooming in there, just zooming in there, okay? Oddly enough, that was after uh, three weeks of training, yeah? It took me three weeks to get like 10 times the amount I had in my account. This is amazing for me, I found it amazing, yeah? Trading like that, 
it took me three weeks to turn three thousand pounds into over thirty thousand pounds okay and i carried on now oddly enough as i was driving on and i'd broken a lot of rules there were some rules which i would stick by there were some rules which i would stick by but you can see i was zooming down that road okay and then it came into this okay now the highest i ever reached was 118,000. i remember it to this day now something very spectacular happened around this time okay uh, and that was that my wife delivered twins and i was so happy so proud and when that happened i couldn't be they were in in the uh, the incubator so i couldn't get up it's like me i was like i was off i was doing silly little trades give myself a five thousand pound stop loss i was zooming over to the hospital to see my kids okay, i actually crashed into a car on my way to see my kids at one point that's how distracted i was but up until this level okay this is what it was producing it was crazy it was absolutely crazy okay um my idea was that because uh, we we're in sort of small accommodation i thought what i'd do is i'll carry on doing so i put down a good reasonable size deposit uh, and uh you know take it from there but then the inevitable happened didn't it yep the inevitable happened and there was a car crash absolute car crash okay how did it happen what did i learn okay so in one afternoon, I lost 62,500. How? How? I'll tell you how. And it's scary. And it's sad. Okay, we can do it here. So let's suppose it, right? That the price on opening, the market opening was here. And I was in at about, I think it was about, uh, let's say 500 pounds a point. Okay? And the mark, now, my little rules were, if there was nothing on the economic calendar and if there was nothing on the squawk and I heard nothing on Bloomberg or CNBC then any severe market movements they were just spoof yeah I was not to pay attention my focus was on the pivot points the high low and close and opening of the previous day okay and, uh, and, and and also uh, the uh, point and figure. I used to use point and figure. It's very good. And so, look at some volume. So on that particular day, the price was around here. It started falling, and I just ignored it. It started falling again. I started. I just ignored it. Trust me. When it's come from here down to there, it's twenty grand, thirty grand, forty grand. And it looked like it was going to go to the low of the day previous. And at that point, it was too much pain. Uh, if you follow my previous videos, I have three rules for trading. Well, my trading plan is trade what you see, trade on probabilities, and accept the risk. Accepting the risk is the hardest part of when you're trading. So when it got to about there, just before, let's say that, that there was the, the low of yesterday, I did the inevitable. I conceded defeat, got out of my position, and changed it so now i'm no longer long i'm short to which happened obviously was it went all the way back slowly slowly to the to where it opened and then for the rest of the day it just oh for the rest of the day it just trended along there like that now when i lost that money I, I, it didn't bother me too much why because you know i broke my rule right i broke my rule i deserve to get a slap in the face okay that was my only little rule i had i broke my rule if i had have just stayed and waited until i got stopped out i.e when it hit the low of yesterday then that would have been fine okay i obeyed i would have lost as much as that I probably would have lost about 40 grand um, but i didn't i disobeyed my rule so i understood that but the lesson what I learned was that whenever I'm trading now, I do what's called a one-third rule, okay? That one-third rule is that, uh, let's say you have a great day. You're trading, you've got 10 grand account, say, you're trading, you make, uh, let's say you make a, a grand, yeah? So you, uh, 300 
333 uh, will stay in your account. 333 will go in a reserve account. And then 333 will go in your pocket where you can spend, go out, clubbing, drinking, take the missus out or whatever. Okay? Uh, so it's always you uh, spend one third for your, yourself. You reserve one third to a certain level. And you keep one third in your account to grow your account. Okay? It might be that you might... Uh, reserve one third up to a certain level let's say it's got, got up to 25 grand okay so now you, you might say right 50 percent in your trading account 50 percent in which you spend okay or whatever or a variation of that the whole idea is to lock in your profits okay because one of the problems i had was that although i was earning lots of money and it was going up quite a lot the problem i had was I kept on thinking, I don't want to put it in the bank because you get nothing with the bank, you know. You get no interest rate in the bank. I mean, look what I'm doing here, you know. And, and you put it in the bank, you're getting like less than like you know, 2% interest. However, I wasn't thinking because by putting it in the bank, you're removing it away from risk, okay? You're removing it. You're that little boy once more on that bench, okay? So, uh, what did it look like? Well, it came in for a fall. Here we go here, Okay. So this is this is my equity graph uh, for, um, for 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 the trading. Yeah. So at the bottom there, starts off low. Okay, we're all the way back up to up to here. Okay. It just accelerated. This is me scaling up, and then that big dip down there. Okay, takes you down to the 60, uh, 2,500. Now I valiantly try to recover from that. Because I knew I just thought, well, just a matter of days or weeks, I'd get back to where I am. But the market conditions were this is a situation where not only did uh, my, my, my wife give uh, uh, birth to twins prematurely, but this is the time of Ireland when Ireland was hitting the rock. So you had the problems with Greece, and now Ireland came into the throw, uh, the, the foyer, and they were thinking about whether they're going to kick Ireland out now. They were having economic problems. So there's a lot of volatility in the market. So when, it, when I started recuperating, slightly there something really upsetting happened where a gap came and when i saw that gap i was like brilliant because i love to trade the gaps yeah and so i was very like uh, uh biased in the direction which was the direction of where the gap was going to close okay uh only for the next day to have another gap above the first gap which i'd never ever seen before i'd never seen two gaps at any one time and that dumbfounded me completely dumbfounded me and that's why I lost some more considerable amount uh, there. That was a big dip, okay? Now, you'll notice on this equity curve, but it sort of tails off straight over a period of time. And that is because I was making withdrawals, okay? Let's go into it, okay? So, on your left, but quickly, on your left, these are the withdrawals which I was making at the time. I was just taking the money out. Taking money. Sometimes I did put some money in, but these were me when I was taking money out. Uh, what to look at on this graph is where it's got the euro sign. This is what I was making per day. Okay? I was making per day. Okay? And you can see that there was some, you know, quite good losses. £500 loss. There's a big gap. And then I've got like a £160 loss. £725 loss is okay considering, uh, you know, how I built it up. £3,550. Uh, 50 pound loss reasonable okay and then you see that massive great big loss further down uh, six i put it at 63,000 okay 63,000 so then as you see valiantly i made another 10 grand over that period of time trying to get it back then that that's this is what you see here there's 21 grand loss because you had this gap and i was i was just, bias in my direction of that gap uh, and then uh, I got some back and then there was another gap and after that I just threw my hands up in the air it's also coming around Christmas time I was going back and forth uh, to, to my kids uh, so my whole concentration went out but overall I feel it worked out to me I mean things aren't brilliantly accurate but it worked out that I had about it was 25 grand yeah I took out from the whole sort of enterprise okay so uh, what what i'm trying to say here if you like is that by taking off that zero 
it, it reduced a bit of my fear. Also, and that was that fear of losing, fear of the risk, okay, which was holding me back, okay. Um, and so I, yeah, but that 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 really really helped me. That's what I can say. Uh, trading is a journey, yeah. It's a journey. We go there in different ways. We approach it in different styles, okay. Uh, I like getting small accounts, trying to flip them as much as possible. When I'm flipping these accounts, I do make withdrawals, uh, having learned my lesson, okay? This summer, uh, I learned the lesson, but I didn't I didn't do the one third. I, I've done like less than that. I think I, 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 I flipped up from 1,200, I flipped up to 11,000. I only took out 1,500, plus what I put in. And then it all went, you know, Pete Tong, which is bad. But, uh, it's having that focus, that change and paradigms a shift. That's what I'm, I'm saying, which I found to be very helpful. So, uh, in case you're wondering, that is Zambia, uh, on the road near Chirundu, uh, in Africa. If you like what you've heard, then please uh, subscribe uh, and put your comments below, really, as to uh, what I want to know is what has helped you push through on your trading when you started doing certain things. You know, what helped you progress? Okay. Uh, that's it, really. That's, that's all I want to say. <laughs>